This is Exitu, thriving in our new buy-in. Hi, I'm, I'm Roberto Libres. Yeah, I first came to Port St. John as, I think, July 2012. Yeah, I'm originally from Philippines, and in 2008, I got an opportunity to come to Canada as a beekeeper. So I, uh, I think in March 4, 2008, and then I'm happy I worked as a beekeeper for almost two years. And then I quit because just only a summer job, so no money on the winter, so I decided to uh, step up you know, to become a barber, because I'm a barber for almost 10 years in the Philippines, before I came. And then after that, you know, worked for two years in Alberta as a, bar as a barber, and then I decided to move to Port St. John in 2012. Yeah, one of my friends, because he's a supervisor in one of the company in Alberta, specific in Grand Prairie and then he hired me as a beekeeper. I I got experience as a beekeeper in Philippines for a couple of years, I think for two years. And then become a barber and then a beekeeper. And then I'm so happy that way you know, that my one of my friends uh, hired me as a beekeeper. So that's my first step. And then I know what happened in Philippines is quite hard to live so that's why I decided to Come to Canada. This is quite scary because that's my first time, especially like you know the long flight, you know, Cebu to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Vancouver. So there's so many preparation because you know uh, the preparation is to prepare everything for me and my wife and my daughter's there because it's so like very emotional you know when you when you go to other country and then your family your daughter your wife still in philippines so that's the it's hard but i'm so nervous and happy it makes emotion as well. I think she's four years old, so, and then, yeah, it, it's hard for, for my daughter, to, and then especially that, that's my only one. Mm -hmm. So my wife got three miscarriages before, but, and then that's the last one, so I said, I need to survive this baby. So I think my daughter is one of, uh, they make me a motivation. When I'm in Grand Prairie, I work almost two years there as a, as a barber, but there's so many confusing about my papers, especially as a barber. So I feel like it's so hard to become a, a, a permanent resident there as a barber. So that's why I decided to uh, move to Port St. John. But originally, one of my, uh, my boss, my employer in Grand Prairie, She's, she likes to help me a lot, so, like call other company or barbershop and 
in especially in this area, especially Dawson Creek or Port St. John. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to her that uh, she helped me a lot until, yeah, moved to Port St. John and then worked at the Herbin for almost three years. And then, yeah, yeah, I'm so thankful that, that way. Many, but maybe thousand or maybe two thousand, something like that. Mm -hmm. But so different though, because that's 2012, and then now it's 2022. So there's lots, lots of people like mm -hmm. Filipino community in yeah. Saint John. I know that because you know, as a barber, so mm -hmm. you know, I think I'm the first one barber here before Neil and before other barber, Filipino barber. So I'm thankful to that I'm here, and then there's more and more clients. Oh, there's 2012 to the 13, so there's so many, like even groceries here, there's lots of Filipino food, or Asian food, you know, rice and everything, but as, as me, by myself, live by myself with a couple of friends, we try to, uh, like, sharing things and everything. So it's not hard for me, it's not so hard, as long as you have money, as, well, as long as you have work. So, but the hard part is to away your family is, is in the Philippines for many years, for many years, so that's the hard part. I got lots of friends that make me happy, you know, but there's a, I don't want to over or too much happy because I'm trying to keep you know, because I'm a family, I have a daughter, I have a wife, so I try my best to do as a father of my one daughter. Mm -hmm. So it's just so many challenges though, but you know, they overcome. And I think it's 2000, I can't remember, but 2014, December, so that's what we reunited, so that's so happy time, you know, mm -hmm. for many, many years, for almost five years, even though every now and then, you know, I decide to make a vacation in the Philippines for one month, two months, but it's so different than you're so united with your wife and your daughter. I'm so I'm, I'm so overwhelming and happy that you know the Canadian government gave me a chance to live here and then live here in Canada. Maybe one day if I make a decision, maybe my wife to go back to Philippines to retire or here. But it depends because I have one daughter. But I'm willing to obey what the rules here in Canada. You know, so make Canada happy. You know, pay the tax, pay everything, and. I'm so happy though that you know the Canadian government welcomed me and not only me but even my wife and my daughter here. I'm a barber for almost 20 years now and then when the first time came to Canada even in Grand Prairie in Alberta you know people always always think about me, Roberto, how do you use your straight razor? You know, in Philippines it's so common to use straight razor, but here in Canada, no, you don't need to use that. But I think if you don't know how to use, but if you know how to use these scales, you know, cutting here, love your job, you know, expand and create like nice atmosphere in your job, and then of course enhance and love your client too. So that's basic. Like for me, I, when I work at the Herbin before, I try to, of course, encourage some barber there that, you know, love your job and then don't always think a quantity, you know. You need a quality job. 
I remember when I worked there before, that's my previous company, like in three to four months I gained clients right away because I tried to do my best, you know, as a barber, to love the job and I, I like quality kind of haircut than the quantity. So I think that's the best that I can advise some people. I think if in a home country, if you got money, so you can go anywhere, whatever. But in Canada, the freedom that I have now is is awesome. I love it because you know, not on me, but even my wife and my daughter. Like, I like five years ago, one of my Canadian friend invited me how to learn how to ski, and like, whoa, it's a new for me. But it's a long story when I learned ski. Though, but now. I'm still beginner, but I know how to ski now, and even my wife and my daughter try to do ski now. And then, of course, camping in the summertime, you know, drive around town or drive in some places. There's unlimited here. You know, like you can drive from north and south and south, east and west. Be positive. Don't complain too much, maybe, because especially nowadays, right? It's like in pandemic time and there's a war. I think the Canadian need to become one, you know. Boy, skills as a barber. I'm not an advisor, but I try to do my best to keep Canadian strong, you know, positive in life, <laughs> not negative, because I always think about, you know. This country, it's, I think it's the best country, not perfect country, comparing to other country, comparing to Central America, some part of Africa, you know, Central Asia. Totally to do a good work though, not totally like, oh that Filipino, it's, it's, it's bad, you know. It's, I, I don't like that though. Even though I got a couple, you know, mistakes when I'm driving, you know, but like <laughs> speeding, whatever, but I mean, I like to, the Canadian government thinking about, oh, this is a Filipino guy that, you know, willing to help our country. Filipino and the Filipino Canadian too. Because you know, we're, we're not in a perfect country where there's so many problems, but. but we can conquer that if we do our best to, you know, encourage people to, no, don't give up, come on, no, don't do bad things, even speeding ticket, don't do that. <laughs>